Yes, guys, almost about such a lengthy discussion that we had on all the concepts of financial reporting where we almost covered everything. Why did I use the word almost? The reason why I always use the word almost is nothing is sufficient as far as your professional exams are concerned. Be it might be CA or CW or CS, there is nothing which is sufficient. It's an ocean of knowledge. You keep on reading, you keep on reading and it keeps going on. But think from a student's perspective. It's very important from looking at what are our capabilities. Our capability is basically very limited when I come with the fact that I'm going to write eight exams as a part of my final exam. So obviously financial reporting is only one by eight. So if you have a total study plan of thousand hours, then at the maximum, at the maximum, you can only invest about 125 hours for financial reporting and not more than that. My class itself ran much more than that. Almost we are almost at 250 hours of a class, more than 250 hours actually. Now, definitely, there is something that we have to do in arranging subjects or arranging topics in a particular order based on their weightage so that we at least do 80% of the syllabus with a limited time approach. Remember, I put it like this. This technique is called as time boxing. This is called as time boxing. Time boxing in the sense means with a particular time limit, I will try to do as many number of topics as possible where it covers the highest weightage in the particular topic. So this time boxing technique, I will basically make sure that it is put across to you. Second. I think this looks better. Now what my time boxing includes? When I use this technique of time boxing, I am basically trying to cover my objective. Just like integrated reporting has objectives, the strategies, the same strategy. If I apply it for the students, then my logic should be within 100 to 130 hours. I should be in a position to cover at least 70 to 80 marks. This is my thing. This I can call it as the first revision. When I talk about the second revision, then I think that this time should come down to about 40 to 50 hours. For the same amount of marks which I would like to cover. If I am talking about the third revision, then I am expecting this to be brought down to 10 to 12 hours. For the same coverage of marks. This is how you have to schedule. Three revisions are compulsory before you enter the exam hall. Now, how do I plan these topics? The topic shall be planned in this manner. The first thing which I will always talk about is financial instruments. We have discussed this in detail, almost about 20 hours plus of discussion that we had on this. I am basically including my India's 32 and 109. Obviously, 107 is disclosure standard, which I haven't dealt with. Revenue from contracts with customers. This we have covered under India's one one five. Normally, I wouldn't have considered it as a very important concept, but I will cover it here as an important concept because it is a latest standard and I expect questions out of this standard. 
I normally wouldn't have considered leases as important, but I am covering it here. These three in combination are category A because these three in total should let me score at least on an average 30 marks. These three in total should at least land up with 30 marks. Now, after I talk about this part A, I will go into part B now, where I will talk about my India 16, which I dealt in the form of property, plan, and equipment, 38 in the form of intangible assets, 40 in the form of investment property, 36 in the form of impairment, 23 as borrowing cost, 105 as non-current assets held for sale. This topic, exactly six standards which I am talking about, I am not including all the rest of the standards into this, only these standards put together along with my India 33 in the form of EPS, India 12 in the form of income tax, India 19 in the form of employee benefits, India 103 and 110 which is in the form of consolidation and also India 102 which is my share base pay. These first parts that is 1 to 4, this you can consider it as BA. The category is BA because that is primarily the most important in the second category because this carries anything between 20 to 25 marks. The same is the weightage even for this five, part, part number 5 and 6 as well. But I will call them as BB which also carries 20 to 25 marks. The reason which I separated this category is your 1 to 4 will take much lesser amount of time than compared to your BB category which includes India's 10, 110, 103 and 102. That's why I put them below category even though they would carry approximately the same amount of marks. Now you total it, 30 marks plus almost 40 marks. Approximately I should be in a total of 70 marks by now. At least 70 marks plus by now I have already done. The rest of the topics will be included as parts. I know we discussed about India 1, you discussed about India 8, we discussed about India 10, we also discussed about uh, you know standards which were like contingencies, provisions, we discussed about multiple other standards like segment reporting that is operating segments. Yes, we did discuss about all those topics even India 21. But these topics which involve so many standards, the weightage has been quite low as far as the repetition in the exam is concerned. That is the reason why I put them as a terminal category and I would request you to basically touch those categories only if you have sufficient time. If you don't have sufficient time because from an average student perspective, I am looking at scoring about 50 marks. I'm looking at scoring 50 marks as an average student. All those people who are looking at aiming at ranks, I think you can follow whatever approach you want because you are much more, uh, you know, uh, logical than what I talk. But I am basically targeting those students who are looking at securing 50 marks. For you to secure 50 marks, the topics which I just told you, even if you read it, have a good understanding of it in three revisions, you should be landing up between 40 to 45 minutes. That means a sure shot pass, a sure shot pass 
definitely you cannot fail in this particular topics. But as I progress, obviously I understand people want to secure a 50 or a 60 or a 70. The highest of my student was 94. His name is Manideep. He's basically from my 2017-18 batch. He got 94. He exceeded my score. My score was 91 in financial reporting. Now, if you are trying to drag yourself to 91s, 92s, 93s, 94s or even more than that, it is possible. But it has nothing to do with how I taught you because it completely depends upon your individual capabilities. The way I taught you is sufficient enough to grab you till at least 70 marks. 70 to 80 marks is what my target has always been. Clear? But for those people who are aiming at only a 50 marks as a part of financial reporting, this is a particular scheme of understanding or learning that you need to do. Now, all those who want to basically hit a 60 or a 70, then you have no such choice. You will have to spend time on all the concepts that we have discussed. It will definitely enable you to touch 70 or 80. Now, coming to the concepts where we had a, the material which was given to you. Actually, I think I should have taken this at the beginning. One, two, three, four, five, and six. These are the modules. Module number one two. This module number one two, I would expect you to only refer. For clarity. Otherwise, I would expect you to skip these two modules. I would expect you to stick to the material that you have written by your hand during the entire process of this training. Whatever you have been writing is probably more important than your module number one two. But sir, somewhere I think I lack clarity. You can always go back to your module number one and two. You can read what the standard says. You can again structure your material that you have written. But I don't expect people to have a thorough reading of module number one and two, not necessary. These three modules. These are compulsion. Compulsory solve. Three, four are workbooks. Five is all the other uh, topics like India's 102 or India's 110 consolidation or India's 103 business combination. India's uh, your module number three is workbook. Module number four was the additional material which has been provided or which has been included after Jan 2021 into your study material. I expect you people to solve everything. I've covered more than 90% of all these modules. Module number six. This I will leave it as optional. It is optional if you have sufficient time, solve a few questions and I don't expect you to solve the entire module as it is. It is not necessary frankly because that is too voluminous, it's almost a 400 pages plus and it is solved illustrations. If you have sufficient time, you have a look at it. Otherwise, I would also be fine if you ignore that particular module. Or if you want to solve it, then obviously it depends upon the time that you have. Okay, don't spend too much of time only solving module number six. Okay, try to make sure that you pick a few questions, try to answer them, check with the answers which are already given, and then you will have sufficient clarity whether you are going in the right direction or not. Clear? This is all I can have a discussion on. I should thank each and every one. I should thank from the bottom of the heart the patience that you people have shown in listening to all the videos that have been provided. And I know it is very difficult to maintain a focus on a particular subject for more than 250 hours. Frankly speaking, I might it might be challenging to myself even if I was a student so I can understand the amount of contribution that you people had in making this a very, very successful session. I should thank each one of you. Please make sure that your doubts keep coming to us. Learning will never stop. Even after you pass, I'll always be available to clarify your doubts. Most of my student, students today who are working in different corporates, 
keep on contacting me saying that they have a particular point and they want a particular solution. I am a person who has always learned to practice. So therefore, my practice has always given me new examples. All those examples which have come up to you, which are quite fresh. They are not the examples from your material. And they are because I have actually worked in those particular industries before. I have worked in those industries. That is the reason why I basically can come up with those kind of uh, you know uh, examples to give you a better clarity on. I'll keep doing that. Please make sure that you people keep your focus. Don't leave a touch of the subject until your exams are over. Please make sure that at least weekly once you read one or two topics of your financial reporting that will keep you connected to this particular subject. So I would want to see you only at the other end as qualified CAs, not as students anymore. Thank you.